Welcome. Thank you for having me in uh, Israel and in Tel Aviv. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, I have to do one thing for Stephen at home, because you know how we clapped during the, the before podcast. Who watches the podcast, by the way? All right, we need, we need to clap on three so it's all, all uh, lined up, synced up, and I can't be near, well, th I guess I'm near this one. But let's see if we can do it all at the same time. I can't count to three in Hebrew. I, was, I, I still can't do that, but are we ready? On, it's, it's one, two, three, and clap. Not one, two, clap. <laughs> All right? You think we got it? All right, on three. One, two, three. Oh, amazing. I don't know the word. What, what word am I looking for? Madim. Which one's Madim? <laughs> Yala, Sabababa? Ah, Sababa. <laughs> Boknim? I like Boknim. Skekdim? I almost got the, the, that's all right. Anyway, I should intro, right? Jared Polin, Fronos, photo.com. All right, we got that out of the way. So the way I'd like to work this is I just, I don't have anything to say. Well, I have a lot to say, but I rely on you guys to ask questions. So when you have questions, you raise your hands or you, well, don't yell them out. You can just ask them and then we'll be good to go. Remember, we only have 20 minutes on these things. So I have to stop because I don't have the Sutters here to do it, or the, the Stevens, Sutter and Eckert. Uh, but um, Lerone is going to take care of that. He's going to wave at me when I need to reset the camera. So anyway, I'll just start talking about Israel for a minute, and then we'll get into questions. Is that all right? Is that all right? Is it too early for you Israelis? <laughs> I tell you, there was nobody at reception when I got here. It was, it was Russian Israelis speaking Russian. All I got was niet and da, and that was it. They didn't, I didn't understand. I don't understand the Hebrew. I don't understand the English. It, or sorry, I do understand that part. But they didn't have it. Um, but anyway, it, it's been awesome. Uh, Vibe Israel and Kinetis has, has brought myself and the other photographers. Where are you guys at? Rebecca's in the back. You got Adam. Adam's up here. You guys know Adam, right? You got Rebecca and Simon and... Von Wong and uh, where's Mike? Mike's out shooting somewhere else and I'm walking out of, uh, Mike's here? Oh, Mike's here? Oh, there's Mike. There he is. And then Adi, Adi Kaplan, give her a big round of applause. Is that, is that enough shilling for you? You want more shilling? They, they didn't understand the word shilling. They clapped. Yeah, she's the one who made most of this happen. Most of it. But that's the other one who made it happen over at Kinetis. I, I, Joanna. Joanna. I, blog, I, I forgot. Oh, I, I know. I just, it, it, it slipped my mind. Anyway. Israel has been a blast. They've, they've shown us a great time. Everybody's been very receptive, except for the one guy in the, uh, Adam, where was it? The market. the market. No, 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 idiot. Adam was taking his picture. He didn't like it. But Adam got some amazing stuff, and everybody else is going to have some great stuff. So we'll have it posted on my site, on their sites, and all that stuff like that. So it, it, it's great to be here. It's my second time, and it's the first time uh, under Frono's photo, because when I was here in 2008, I didn't have that. I had the Fro, but I didn't even have the website yet. Um, and in, in a short period of time, in under four years since I started the site, I'm standing here, which is pretty cool, with a room of people that, it's nice to draw more than some bands I've toured with, <laughs> which, is, which is always interesting, because playing to empty rooms is no fun. Um, how many of you guys have YouTube channels? How many people want to build a following? Yes? No? How about, how about this? Do, who knows Gary Vaynerchuk? Anybody? Through, Through me, one guy. Okay, when, when, when he, he's a big fan of when you get asked a question, he's like, own it. Like, yeah, who, who wants it? Don't, eh. You know, you don't want to half-ass it. Is there cursing at Google? Um, so yeah, you just, what was that? Fuck no. Fuck no. All right, so. Um, I don't, I don't know. Any, just give me questions, because questions are what's going to drive this conversation in whatever direction you guys want to take it. So there was a guy who was going to ask me something about basketball, but what I definitely don't want to talk about is what camera should I buy, 
that's not what we're going to talk about. Let's talk about mentalities. Let's talk about photography. Let's talk about brand building, whatever you want to do, except for what lens should I buy? Yes, Ken. Hi, my name is Adi. Adi. Congratulations. So Adi shoots raw. I'm going to repeat it for the people at home, but go ahead. The question is, at home, when did I start taking pictures and why? There. Well, they would, they would yell at me if I didn't answer. They'd be like, we can't hear what they're asking. No. No. We'll be good. I started taking pictures 20 years ago. That made me, well, I was 13 at the time. The reason I started taking photos is I saw, I was in junior high school, so that's 7th, uh, 8th grade, and I was at a basketball game, and there were these girls that were taking photos for the yearbook, and I thought they were doing a terrible job which is the case a lot of times. So I thought that I could do a better job. So I went home and I got my mom's Fuji Discovery 2000 camera. It's a point and shoot. Dropped the lo load of roll of black and white in there. And I went back and I shot a basketball game myself. Sat down on the floor, started shooting. It's a point and shoot, but when I saw the pictures back and the yearbook people saw it, they were like, you, you anticipated the moment very well, even with a point and shoot. Because anybody that's ever shot with a film point, who's shot with a film point and shoot back in the day? Or even in the day. All right. You know that there's a lag time. There was a delay when you hit that button. And I just had a way of figuring out how to make it work. And I made it work, and that was the start of it. When I got that roll back, it may not have been the best quality in the world because it was black and white 400 speed film in a gym, popping a little flash off, whatever was built into this little thing. And the images were just, they were there. And that's, that's one of the only things I care about when people are starting out, is that if you get your composition right, I don't care even if you're shooting an auto or your settings are so far wrong, because the one thing that's much harder to teach than settings is how to get the proper composition and framing. If you can get your eyes right, if you can just capture the moment, I can teach you or anybody you can learn on your own how your own. That's a that's a Hebrew name, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can you can learn you can learn that stuff on your own. That's the easy stuff. The exposure triangle is easy. Uh, it's it's the capturing the moment and everything like that that is that takes some work. So that, that's how I got started. And from there, it just was a matter of finding my right camera, or not the right camera, just getting a, an SLR at the time, which so happened to be a Canon, was the first SLR I was ever sold. Because I didn't, I didn't buy it, I, I was sold it, because I didn't know any better at the time. Um, and, then, and then I worked from there. All right, who's next? Over here, and the guy, the guy who tweeted me earlier with the bright green shirt, right? <laughs> yeah. I'll be having the bright, what's it say? Keep calm and? It's not my shirt. It does. And by the way, before you do that, for asking, I've got a think tank. This is a Pixel Pocket Rocket that's like limited edition. It says wine country on it. It's very girly. Here you go. Thank, thanks to uh, think tank. Simon, Simon's one of the think tank guys who does social media, if you ever follow it, and he just gave me a bunch to throw out. Yes. So the question for the people at home, uh, this gentleman in the green shirt has a, a, a blog. He asked me what drives me to make a lot of videos, what drives me to keep going, where do I come up with the ideas and also. So the reason I started making videos in YouTube was, was, was where I decided to go, was that my writing, many of you, well, hopefully you don't understand that my grammar may not be the best. Does anybody understand that my grammar is not the best when I write? My, yeah, Simon does. <laughs> But at least, thankfully, here it's not your first, well, most of your first languages. Um, I, I had trouble articulating or getting out the words when it was time to type. I just couldn't do it. It would take me too long to figure out how to write something. And I knew that if I sat down in front of a camera in three, four, five, six minutes, I could have a piece of content that I can put up there onto YouTube, which was owned by Google, which is the largest search engine in the world, which then makes my videos easier to find. One of the reasons behind making so many videos was the fact that the more I put out there, the more people were going to find me. So I, don't, I didn't care which video somebody watched first. So if I have now over 1,500 and probably 40 or so videos, yes? Yeah, no, no, I want, okay. I want to hear this. You're okay. We're oh, hi, people. Hi. Toda roba. I mean, shalom. <laughs>
we're at the reasons I used YouTube, right? Yes, because YouTube was Google. And it, it, oh, I know where I'm at. I know where I'm at. Uh, so putting up a lot of videos, making a lot of content, meant that people looking for something in photography would most likely find one of my videos. And if they found one of them, then they may go ahead and find another and subscribe and then get updates for where I'll, what, what's coming next, which is really important, right? The more you put out there, the, the, the more people are going to find you. But what's more important than that is quality content versus just putting out crap. If I put out crap every day, you guys wouldn't be sitting here. And that's, that's, just, that's just how it is. So quality content that was consistent, and how did I come up with the ideas, right? Mm -hmm. They're out there. They're just out there. Sniff tests, unboxings, um, critiques of people's works, questions that come in from you guys. That's easy content to make. So when you're asking, ask questions. Ask questions of your readers. What do you want to know? What, what could I help you with? Take three of those questions. I mean, when I started, I was making two videos a day shooting one in the morning, editing it, then putting it up, then doing lunch, then coming back and doing the same thing after lunch. And it was just, it, w it wasn't sustainable. So then I came up with a, a model to follow, a, a, uh, a calendar. Basically, this is Monday, this is Tuesday, this is Wednesday, and then I would fill it in from there. And I never had problems coming up with ideas. Photography is always changing, or, or all of this is changing, so there's always something else to talk about. Good? What's good? Yeah, Tov? No, that's awesome. Svababa, but that's not like good, thank you. Toda. Ken. Folk Neem. By the way, the videos that I saw lately and I love is the product photography. Yeah. The zebra? The zebra pillow. That was good. That just happened. The second one is the one like the shoot rock. Yes. That works. That's a great question. Uh, the question for everybody at home is, do I consider myself an educator or a photographer? Which Benjamin Von Wong should listen up to this. This, this, is, this is a tough question. It, it's, one of the, it's one of those things. And it's, am I an educator, photographer, and where do I find time to shoot? So I've always been a photographer first. And when I started the site, the idea behind it was that I would create this content that would, help that, not, that would help me get more jobs because I was looking to break out something that I could do different. I sat around my house for a long time not being successful in my own eyes. I may have been shooting for Rolling Stone and Spin and shooting for musicians, but I wasn't where I wanted to be. And part of that was I wasn't putting myself out there into the world sharing information. I was locked up. I wasn't letting anybody know anything because I thought that if I shared information, then people would better me. They'd be better than me because they would be getting the jobs, but I wouldn't. So I didn't want to share. And then sharing is caring, whatever that means. What, what's that from? Care Bears or something? I don't know. But, but what, what happened is I, I, something I needed to make a change. I needed to, uh, what, Michael Jackson? For, for, for once in my life, I need to change. Change! Hee <laughs> hee! No. Uh, so I needed to, to come up with something different. And so I thought that if I put videos out, just either helping or just funny and informative, that people would then hire me. Uh, businesses would see my work. And, they, and, and unlike, Von Wong puts out amazing stuff that I think is more... Uh, Woo! Yeah, yeah. Uh, excuse me, that, that is more saleable commercially than me. Adam does the same thing with his commercial work. He puts it out there and he gets jobs from that. And what I found happening with, with the work I was putting out is that I was getting a lot of beginner photographers asking questions. And that was one of those things that Gary Vaynerchuk talks about where you have to pivot in a business. I was very early in, in the development of what I was doing and I realized that I wasn't going to get jobs by putting these videos out there. It just, it just wasn't going to happen for me at the time. And so I, there was a need that people wanted questions answered. It just seemed that they couldn't find the answers they were looking for. And honestly, I couldn't find v good videos out there because when I searched them, I was seeing crap. The same thing that I saw when, when those girls were shooting basketball and I was shooting or, and I was sitting on the sideline, instead of telling people and being a troll in the, in the comments, being like, you're an idiot, this sucks. 
Toda roba. You know, I figured I would make videos instead. So I'm sidetracking myself tremendously, which always happens. My brain goes 20 different ways. Where was I? Remind me. Where was I going? Uh, uh, the, oh, yes, where I pivoted. Pivoting. Um, so then I realized that it was the, the questions coming in, I needed to start answering them. So that's when the educator part came about. It's, a, it's, it's such a tough question because I love shooting. I love going out there and shooting, but what I've started to find is there's how many of you here that want to keep learning. So I still do the jobs, I still shoot, but what I have the ability to do now because of what the website and what you guys have helped build is that I can shoot what I want when I want to, when I want to. So I can go where I want, I can do my own shoots, I can set them up, but every time I go do a shoot now or do something, there's content that needs to be made. So that's a struggle that is in my mind every day, is, is this just for me to go out and shoot or am I going to share this with everybody? Good, batteries are good. Um, or am I going to share it with everybody? And, and that's the dilemma that I still face. Because even though I, I'm here to make content, I'm here to capture images, but every time I go out and shoot just for myself, I go, well, how could I share this with everybody? Could I do a rapid fire critique of my own work? Could I put out a raw file? So there, there's a lot of those things. I'm still a photographer, which is first and foremost. I, I've found that in anything that I've ever done, it's all come back to photography. If I haven't liked the job, I've always tried to find a way to work photography into it because that's what I love and that's what I enjoy. But I also love business. I love educating. I love marketing and branding. That's the fun stuff for me. And tying that in with photography is great. Like everybody has usually some, they have certain hobbies and when you can tie them together and make, it a, make a living at it, it it's, it's awesome. It's fababa. It's fababa. Did I answer that mostly? Any more? Nothing? That's good. Still time? I have time. People, that's one thing people don't get. There's, there's time management, right? I pre-uploaded 10 or 12 videos before I left because I'd be away for a week. But I have internet. You guys have internet here, much better than when 2008. Um, what about camels? No, you don't. We know you don't because we've only seen like one camel. Adi made sure we didn't see camels. But the, the time management's important. I, I work my ass off. I work sometimes 8, 12, 15 hours or more a day, depending on what I do, and I enjoy it. I don't hate getting up in the morning. Somebody once told me if you, if you if, if it's, well, in this case, if it's Saturday night and you, you're, you're dreading going, home, going to work on Sunday morning, it's po probably time to find something else. It's just one of those mentality things. If you hate your job every day, find something that works that you really love and work towards it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the day job, but that's just something that, that, that was told to me by some internet guy. Um, so the time thing is about time management. I, I put everything, I pre-uploaded videos, I pre-wrote the articles, I pre-did it on my website, so that all I really needed to do was turn it on and then put out a Facebook post, I, which I could time, to the, the time that I like putting them out, the time that I know that the most people view it, uh, and the same thing with Twitter. So it's just a matter of, of time management. So I feel like I have enough time, and uh, I don't know, it's just, it's, even though I'm really busy, I still make it work. So many questions. You had one earlier. Okay, shooting basketball. D7100, 105 macro 2.8, and a 11 to 16 Tokina 2.8. Is the 105 long enough? Yeah, the 105 is plenty long. A lot of things you will see, you may like having 11 to 16 underneath the basket if you're sitting on the baseline. That, that's a good lens for shooting wide. And plus, you have the 1.5 crop factor so that it expands. That 105 is going to be whatever times 1.5 is on that lens, which is about 150, 160. So that's plenty long. It may even be too long for shooting for basketball. And uh, I have uh, another question. Okay, so he's just putting his work out there. What type of site? Facebook, uh, Squarespace, uh, your own website, Flickr. I use Flickr just to put photos places. Facebook is great for, for the viral aspect of it, for the sharing, for the social aspect to make it go out there and have people in, uh, talk about it. But Facebook is not a place to have your portfolio. You want your own home. And there's plenty of free website things out there. Um, I, as some of you know, I work with Squarespace. There's a code. You could use code FRO, uh, and they'll get 10% off if you want to use it. But 
you get a 14-day free trial with them. Uh, you can use, we were at Wix last night. That's a free website. Um, but I think the important thing when it comes to putting a portfolio together is having your own site, your own place to put it, because that means people are coming to your playground, your sandbox, to, w to look at your work. So putting it on Facebook and then directing somebody there to see your portfolio is not what I would recommend. Oh, you want me to tell you what to do with your life? <laughs> I hear there's an army here. <laughs> 18 years old, wants to know what to do with his life. Um, basically looking for some help and direction. You, you, passion for photography, parents are doctors, of course. Lawyers, too? No. Oh, no lawyers. But uh, some help and direction. See, th this is a hard thing to do. You have to figure out, can you make it? as a photographer with your passion? Or is there something else that you can do that is going to allow you to still have the passion for photography but have a day job that pays the bills? Because I know in, in, in the US or most places around the world that photography is, a, is not the easiest thing to do to make a living, right? It's, it's not the easiest thing, but there are ways to do it. But it's also nice to have that steady income coming in, to have a paycheck, to have a day job, or, or to have money coming in one way or another. So I, it, it's, it's, it's hard for me to tell you what to do. You could go into the Army. You have to go into the Army, right? Well, take your camera. Ziv is doing that, right? Ziv, how we say his last name? Koren. Ko Koren, which we're going to go, Adam and I are going to talk to him later, privately, he and I. We're good buddies. Yeah, we're close. Um, but yeah, if you have a passion for it, if you fold it into every, anything that you do, then you're going to love it. I don't know that you can love the army, but, but really, it's an opportunity to say, look, I have a passion for photography. I'd like to be the guy that documents this brigade or documents this and that. That way, you're still doing something. You're still, I don't, do they pay you to be in the army or you have to be there? <laughs> they, they, they pay you awesome? <laughs> Botnim, they're paying peanuts. <laughs> paying Botnim. Hold on. But I hear that the, um, the, the, uh, the ultra-religious get paid to be religious. Uh, <laughs> I know, don't have political statements here. It's never good. So I think, I can't tell you not to be a doctor. I don't know that you don't have passion to go that direction or whatever you do. But with whatever you decide to do, if you can fold in your passion and love for photography, you may find a way, you know, a means to an end, a way to get to being a full-time full photographer. Good? I'm running out of think tank stuff. Is there more? Uh, so don't get upset if I run out of think tank stuff. I need to, I need to pick somebody. Go ahead. When you're doing a review. Good question. When I'm reviewing a new camera or sniffing it, what are the most important things that I want people to know? Well, the sniff test is really important. The wind tunnel test is becoming more important, and then the lick test is definitely coming important. What's it taste like? But when I'm looking at new cameras, it doesn't matter if it's the entry-level Canon or the D4S or the 1DX. If you can set it manually, you're going to be able to pretty much do anything that you want if you put good glass on it. To me, good glass is the important thing when it comes to, to cameras. But you know there's limitations to, to lower-end models, and there's benefits to having a more expensive camera. But what I'm trying to get across to people is that you can capture images, quality images today, with just about everything if you have the education. If you understand the exposure triangle and you take control of your camera, then you can get quality results no matter what camera you have. So I, I'm not a, you know, it's not all about gear with me. It's not gear this, gear that. I talk about it because that's what brings people in. That's what they search. So you talk about marketing and branding, if I put up a review of a lens or something, that's what somebody's looking for. That's what they want to find, but then they find the other videos. Um, the, the important thing is just getting across the understanding photography. This is the last think tank thing, so no more questions. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I saw your hand. Yeah, oh, you ran closer. How many months sober? I'm like over 10 years, 11 years in 
So it's the opposite. You don't get sober. You just get deeper, deeper, uh, chasing the dragon. What about B and H? B and H is like it's abbreviations of Baruch Hashem, you know, thank God, and also Liana Chot in Hebrew means no discount. What's that one again? Li nana hoch. Bli. Bli nana hoch. Don't ask again. My, my question is like, what am I supposed to do with uh, this position? And, uh, and I'm trying to, I mean, I'm even learning it as a, for a BA. Well, it starts with one, step one, and it ends at 12. Okay. They don't have the 12 step program here, I'm assuming. <laughs> no? Because that's, really, that's Jesus, right? You're right. So how do you channel your addiction into something that's more healthy? Yeah. Well, it is healthy. Okay. That's the question. He's a, he's a, he's a, a, a camera-holic, and he's looking to... Can I just say hi first? Yeah, that was my question. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not... Uh, look, if this is what you love doing, you will find a way to be successful at it. Um, are you warming up, Wong? He's dancing. He's doing the chicken dance. Um, <laughs> I have, to, I have to think of something for you here. I, I mean, if you're shooting that much, then put your stuff out into the world. If you want to talk to the camera, sit down in front of your camera and make videos. Talk to people and, and just figure out which direction you want to go with that. But get out there and shoot. Do a project. Channel it into something that you're passionate about and then go and do it. So if it's traveling, if it's people, if it's something else, I'm sure there's people of Tel Aviv, right? The guy ripping off, people ripping off honey, humans of New York. You know, do a project. Come up with a personal project, but you have to focus on something. Because it sounds like you have lack of focus, right? I sound like, what's that guy's name in the U.S.? Tony Robbins? Except he's this tall, and he's a motivational speaker. Yes! Uh, I need hands. Yes! Shooting in low light situations. The focus is hunting. How do we get better focus to make sure, uh, he's saying, in concert situations with the changing lights? Manual focus isn't, isn't going to work very well when it comes to shooting concerts. We know that, especially if people are running around. I haven't found too much trouble trying to focus on the people, even with a D3000, which is a much older camera. Um, what I've done is I've maybe switched into single focus, which has allowed me to find a point to lock onto, especially if the musician isn't running around, if they're just standing there. It should be easier to, have, to lock onto them. There really shouldn't be a lack of light. At, at a concert. There should be some light that's bright enough to allow you to focus with almost any camera. And if it's constantly changing, I just, I mean, they're a lead singer, they're usually in the light. So I'm not sure. Catch the drum. Well, okay, the drummer. Well, the drummer is out of luck. Sorry, shit, shit out of luck. The drummer, the runs. Okay, hold on. When it comes to the drummer, there's not much you can do unless you can get up on stage and get closer to him and get the access to do that. Because there's usually no light on the drummer. Unless they're the biggest drummers in the world, then there will be more light on them. I'm checking this again. Still good. Um, so the drummers, it's just slowing your shutter speed down, but that's going to add to motion or bumping your ISO. When it comes to guys running around, to keep them in focus, it's, ju it's just a matter of tracking them in continuous focus. And then, if you want to freeze them, you have to either have a fast enough shutter speed or flash. But flash isn't really looked at as something that you want to use when you're shooting uh, in, in the pit. So it's just a matter of being able to get a fast enough shutter speed or continuing to track them to get the image hopefully tack sharp. Good? Ken? Dimitri? That's not very Israeli. <laughs> Do I have a goal in life or in photography? photography. F with photography, the path that I'm on, I'm pretty happy with. I'm pretty happy with helping as much as I can the people out there to, to make photography into something more if that's what they want or just as a, as a hobby. For me, what I like to do is just constantly build. I'm looking to build the brand further. Uh, and it seems that infotainment is the way for me. I love entertaining and I love doing photography and I love branding and marketing like I said before. Uh, so the ultimate goal is to continue to just build and be successful or as successful as possible and, and honestly be happy with it. If I'm, not, if I'm not creating, then I feel like I'm just wasting time. 
And so it, it's just a matter of continually creating uh, and, and, and just being happy with what I'm doing. Good? Uh, my name is Shlomi. Shlomi? Yes. Hello, Shlomi. That's very Israeli. So, um, uh, recurring trends. How to expand his marketing as a photographer, but maybe not doing what I'm doing. So that was the question I asked myself four years ago and ended up making YouTube videos. That's one, but it, it's, it's one of those things that you find. I can't define what you need to do. It, it's, you have to find that spark that is going to connect with which direction to go. Something you can do when it comes to clients and making your clients happier are the leave behind things. If you do a portrait session with a, a, a newborn or something like that where you add value by giving something extra that they didn't expect, by leaving them with a photo book, by leaving them with a, a video that you may have cut together and then put online, that's something that they may end up sharing on Facebook with their friends or wherever they're going to share it on Mobley. Mobley? Does anybody use Mobley? Now, I didn't even know what the hell Mobley was either, and I guess you don't know, which is good. Um, it's one of those things that by, by making the leave behinds, by giving something that they never expected, they let people know. If you're going to give somebody a photo book, it's gonna, they're not going to throw it out. That's something they won't throw out. Have a unique business card thing that isn't something that they're just going to throw. Because I get business cards all the time. And they don't go very far anymore because business cards aren't really necessary other than my current business card. Is my hair all right, by the way? These are the business cards that I use. Um, I didn't fluff my hair earlier, so I didn't know if it was poofy or not. Um, so the leave behinds are important. But what happens is let people share the stuff on Facebook. Do you have watermarks on your stuff? Yeah. Get rid of them. <laughs> uh, watermarks are, are, are just, what? Because. Either have a very small watermark, your metadata should be in there somewhere, or just have a way that when you share it with people, that they share it from your page on Facebook and you're tagged in it. That's really important. That is your watermark in essence. Don't worry that somebody's going to steal your work and then print it. If they're going to steal it, they're going to steal it. Don't put up the most high resolution stuff. But when it comes to Facebook, you upload the images and you say, here's a gallery to share. Please share it. Make sure, and you have to tell people this, make sure that you tag me in it. That's the stuff that spreads out and that's how you get more clients. Because if somebody has a child, which I hear that Israelis have 3.75 kids, right? At least. Am I wrong? More? Seven? No, but so if they have a child, they have friends with kids. They're going to see what you put out there, and they're going to be like, oh, snap, this guy took amazing photos. I may want to contact him to get the same thing. It's, it's, it's free marketing, and that's why I don't want to put a watermark there, because people are going to be like, you know, that, that's annoying. That's in the way. If you do it, you put it in the bottom corner. I'm not totally against them, because you still need that brand, brand recognition, but make sure it's not interfering with the image. So that's what I would, I would share out there, and that's how you're going to help spread what you're doing without making the videos, but you're putting it out there, you're doing leave behinds. It's two cool marketing things that you can do to be a little more successful. Good, Ken? Hey. I like your hair. You play music? You're a singer, aren't you? You're the lead singer? I'm a bass player. Yeah, you didn't take it for a bass player. You didn't look like a bass player. Go ahead. The question is, when I put my images on Flickr or out there into the world, are there, uh, there's Creative Commons, there's different copyrights that you can do. What I've done is I've put them, it, it's, uh, I made a video about this and Steven never edited it. But then he blamed me for not editing it. But it's my fault. It's not his. I never put it out there. Um, I put it as, all rights reserved, but Creative Commons share alike, which, meant, which means that anybody can share it, anybody can take it, as long as they don't benefit commercial, as long as they don't uh, sell it. I want people to share it. I'll upload full res images, and even the raw files. I have no control over what happens to those raw files. Even the Justin Bieber photo I put out there, it was a full res image. It was the raw file that anybody can do anything with. The best I can do is simply say, please don't sell this, and I just tell people that. Use this for personal use only, um, but I'm not afraid to put the images out there, my images, 
uh, because a lot of it does come back to that educational thing. I haven't thought about putting up the best of the best of the best with honors stuff that I've done, but I'm thinking about it based off of what Trey Ratcliffe does. He's a guy who just puts out a full res HDR image every day of his best stuff that he sells, but people can still download it and print it. So I put it out into the world for people to share, but not make money off of. Whether they follow it or not, I don't really concern myself. It, it's the same thing with my video guides. People are like, well, do you have DRM, which is digital rights management, a way to keep people from stealing it? And then the, the answer is no. I don't want to, Simon, did you just walk in front of my camera? Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. No, go ahead, do it again. <laughs> um, the, uh, it, it's, the, the DRM isn't something I worry about because I don't want to make it hard on the people that are buying it to make it harder on them and make them feel like they're, they're the stealing. Because I hate when people make me feel like I'm a thief and make me jump through hoops like the TSA in the US when I get patted down and they feel me up and they touch my butt and my hair. It's not something that, well, they, I, I feel like I'm, I'm a criminal when that happens. Um, so well, I forget the question already. Where was I going? Yeah, thank you. The rights, the rights. I, I think I answered. Yeah, yeah, the DRM. Um, uh, the, the other thing is, when I put the stuff out there, I'm not afraid that people are going to steal it. If somebody downloads it illegally, maybe they become a fan and they buy a shirt or they watch the videos, which YouTube has ads on. You know, if they weren't a fan before, I think that most people respect the fact that I have so many free videos that it's so much free content that you end up thanking me by purchasing something in the long run anyway. Cool. Question pretty much is Zooms versus Primes, benefits, there's pros and cons to both. So there's pros and cons to both. It depends on what you shoot. For the type of shooting that I do, I love my Zooms. I have the 14 to 24, I have the 24 to 70, and I have the 70 to 200, which I can say here is what? The Hebrew Trinity. It works here. I can say it. Um, for me, that's, I'm a, I like shooting quicker. I'm fast moving. I'm shooting concerts. I'm, I'm going around and getting having to get the guy running around on stage. And that's where primes don't work for me. But somebody like Adam, Adam loves his 85-1-2, and Adam switched from Nikon to Canon. And by the way, it doesn't matter what you shoot with. I could care less about the Nikon versus Canon bullshit or anything else. It's whatever you, whatever you capture great images with is all that matters. And I don't buy that whatever camera you have is the best one that, that whole thing, I still think glass is important. But Adam's got an 85-1-2. He has a, you have a 50. You're going to pick up a 35-1-4. Adam loves primes because his portraiture doesn't require him to run around as much, correct? Right. And that's the stuff that makes his, his work uh, pop off the screen are those great prime lenses. I need water. Boknim? Did Adi, did you bring Boknim? Um, oh, I was supposed to bring them? I'm nuts, yes. Primes are, are, are fantastic. There's no, they're not zooming. The, the, the quality that you get out of them, the color, the, the clarity, that stuff just pops. That, that's what you get out of that. Zooms may not be as sharp. Now, they're much sharper today than they used to be. They're, they're beyond sharp. I mean, I don't have a problem with them. But when you see some of Adam's portraits shot at 2, F2, it's like, you wanna, it's, like it's gonna cut your wrists. It's pretty darn sharp when the focus is right. <laughs> so, but that's with everybody. When your focus is right, it's going to be great. So it depends on what you shoot, and that's what it comes down to. I don't have primes anymore. I had an 85-1.4 because I needed that faster 1.4 when the D4S didn't do 56,000 ISO. Now I can compensate for that uh, by using, I have all the 2.8 lenses that are zooms. Does that answer it? And so is it, is it, Oh, important to have backups to that. So have the primes plus the zooms. How's the, how's the time? Five? Five. Okay. So it's, it's imp it's, it depends on what you shoot. It's, your, it's the way that you like to shoot. I can't tell you whether you should have zooms or not. If that is the way that you like to shoot without the zooms and shoot primes, then you stick with that. So that's really it. Cool? I want to ask you about the... So we all know Modest Yahoo? The question is, uh, was I there for the transition that he went through? Transition. 
transitions. I met him, was it before I started my site? I don't know how many years ago, but basically I was denied a photo pass to go photograph him and I got pissed off because I was told no and I don't like being told low. Uh, so I chose to contact his management. Oh, and I did have my website at the time, I remember now. I chose to contact his management and ask for access. Asking is very important. If you never ask, you're never gonna get a yes. Who cares if they say no, you don't miss out on anything. So I'm never afraid to ask for something because they may say yes. So I asked management if I could do something behind the scenes. If I could do something different, and um, what's, the guy, what's the guy yesterday, what's his name? Who are we going to later? Uh, Zev. It would help if I knew that, right? Ziv. Ziv talked about this yesterday when he spoke to the photographers at Kinetis was so kindly of bringing us to Vibe Israel, Vibe Israel, Vibe Israel. Three times? Is that enough? <laughs> Is that better? Um, he was talking about he doesn't like shooting what everybody else does. He doesn't want to be, I'll just equate it to photography, in the pit or in the press line with everybody else trying to get the same thing because there's nothing unique about it. So I asked for access into Modest Yahoo's world, and they said yes because I, I just do emails very well. My name is, I shoot for so-and-so, this is what I'm looking to do, and here's the work to back it up. Because if you don't have the work to back it up, then nobody's going to let you in. So they said yes. I spent 12 hours with him that day through warm-ups, through prayers, and that's when he, was, he, had, the, he had everything, the packs and the, uh, everything. Um, and I asked him on the bus, I said, why did you give me access? Why did you say yes to me? And he said, one, my manager said you're the real deal and your work is, is great. And second, you asked for something that, I like, that I'm looking for. Not the same old stuff. He's like, people come on the bus all the time and they just want to talk and they just want to do this, this boring stuff that's not unique. And what I wanted to do was have access. It was just he and I sitting in a room or sitting on the bus or, or doing, going out to lunch or doing whatever. And it gave me access to things that other people don't have. And that's what I like getting. I like getting behind the scenes where other people can't be because that gives me an opportunity to get something that they haven't seen before. So that to me is extremely, extremely important. So through the transitions, I photographed him with the hair and then I photographed him without. I just got done photographing, how, how much time? I got done photographing him, 30 seconds, let me know, please. I got done photographing him in LA. He came to my house in Philadelphia. We did some more photos and that's in the way that he is now. But for anybody out there, he's still religious, he's still practicing, he's just doing his own thing. Yeah! yeah. Yoel. Yoel. So I'll take that part of the question, which is, uh, what makes me say that a photo is awesome? Or what, what captures me with that? So yeah, th this is one of those things that you just, I just know. And it may not be when I take the picture. Sometimes you take a picture and you go, that's the shit. Right? I want to, uh, some, you know that you captured something that could be amazing. And sometimes you're wrong, but a lot of times you get the picture back into the computer and you sit there and, and when I look at these images and I go, that's it. You just get a feeling, that euphoric feeling of knowing that you captured something that is an amazing image that's different. You see so much crap out there and I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of crappy images. Kaka? What's the word? <laughs> yeah? Is that what it is? Chach? Chach, I was close. You, you see a lot of junky images, but when you come across something that grabs you, it just grabs you. You just see it and you go, that's it. So it's just one of those things that you'll know the great shots when you see them. And you, and you should, because there is so much crap out there today that, that the good images do stand out. And when they do... It, it's just, well, when I'm shooting, I look for composition. I'm always checking my angles when I'm shooting. I'm always looking for things popping out of the images that shouldn't be there. Um, I'm always looking to see if I'm cutting something off that I shouldn't be cutting off, like fingers or people at the ankles and things like that. I'm always observing my frame. That's something really important for me to, to, to pay attention to. But when it comes to capturing those images, it's just feeling the moment and capturing it. You have to anticipate what's going on 
and it's your job to capture it and not miss it. So it's knowing, do I have the right lens on there? Are my settings proper or pretty close to proper? Because we do shoot raw. I think it's more important to capture the moment than to get the exposure perfect and sit there and to be a tweaker and miss the moment. I want to see you be within a, a stop, under a stop. You know, if you're a stop off, it's not the end of the world, right? But I'd rather see you capture that moment than worry about everything else. <sighs> How we doing? Good? Oh, a marketing question. Go ahead. Yes. So basically, he's being undercut. There's other people that will charge less money, but probably offer a subpar product. How do you get people to hire you, and how do you tell them that they should go with the quality versus the crap? You show them quality work. And if they're just price shopping, there's nothing you can do about it. If all they're looking for is, the be is, a, is to get a cheap photographer, then that's what they're going to get. Is there a Craigslist in this country? No. no. So they have something similar. So you know, if you look there, you know you're going to get a, you're not going to get the right type of client. Or a serial killer. Or a serial killer. But that, that, that's the one thing you have to, you don't have, <laughs> some clients just don't want to spend money. And they don't really care about the quality. You have to find the right client for you. Uh, and then when they do come along, you say, look, you can, you can educate, it's our job to educate the client about photography. Tell them why you based off of the quality of the work, and not just ripping on other people, not why not them, but just say things like this, I, sh I shoot raw, and let me explain what that means to you. That means I'm taking the utmost care in capturing your images because I want to get the best quality possible, and that's raw. So if you ask somebody if they shoot raw and they say no, you may want to think twice about hiring them. That's just a mentality thing that you put into their brain. So you're training them to know that raw is pretty damn important. You also say, I shoot with all professional gear and I may have backups, or I have backups, just in case something happens. So I'm prepared for the day that if it's your wedding or something that's really important, that if something goes wrong, you have nothing to worry about because I'm ready to go with a backup. The other people can't tell you that. They may show up with a point shoot that they don't understand how to use. So you get what you pay for. If you're happy with crap, you're going to get crap. If you want quality, you want something that's professional, and you want a professional that shoots photos behind it, then you go with me. Drop the microphone, walk out. <laughs> let, them, let them make the decision off of that, because you've done your job. Shut up and, and move on. Uh, check it and move on. You don't, you don't, no? I used to hear check it vak vasha all the time. Um, so that, that's what I have to say. You, do, you don't need to oversell. You just need to say it and then move on and hopefully they get it. Let them, and when it comes to sales, my dad used to tell me this, that the, uh, he used to say, he who speaks first loses. So as a salesperson, if you're trying to close a deal and you, 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 you get ready to close, because there's the art of the close, where you tell somebody, you know, the fatal alternative, would you like to go with A package or B package, right? One or two. They have to make a decision right there. That's how you close somebody. You say, would you like this one or that one? They're either going to tell you, yeah, yeah, I don't want it. Or they're going to say, you know what? I like this one. Let's go with that. And then you've already sold them. So when you make that offer, you shut your mouth. You don't sit there and continue to sell because they need to shut up. Let them do it. So you say, this is it. This is my offer. You got this or this. Let them speak first because they're going to make a decision. Sometimes you have to walk away and then come back, but that, that's what I'd do. Good? Ken? Lo? Ken? You asked one already. i got to keep moving. No, I didn't. No, no, she, he, he, was, he was raising his hand. But okay, go ahead. You're lucky he raised his hand because it caught my eye, and then you get the question. Continue to the other question. Do customers know quality when they see it? And the answer is they better know quality when they see it. There's a big difference between a pile of horse manure and roses that smell like ooh, ooh, ooh. Does anybody get that reference? No, no, no. Uh, well, but it's a, it's a good rap song. Uh, Outcast. Yeah. Oops, yeah, the answer is yes. And if they don't get it, then they're, they're never going to get it. Because you know when there's a bad image that you see, and then there's quality. Quality comes to the top, rises to the top. So the answer to that is yes. Uh, rapid fire questions, one minute only. Well, that's up to me. Go ahead. Green subject. You have like a green subject, like one person or 
dream subject? All right, do I have a dream subject? It, it, for me, it's, it's an interesting person in an interesting place that affords me the ability to capture candidates that are pretty darn amazing. Ken Rockwell. That's a Ken Rockwell. Did you just say Ken Rockwell? <laughs> Sheked? Lech? Yala? Um, OK, keep going. Next. Yes. I like your hair. Adam Lerner's right behind you. Uh, brothers, writers have writer's block. Yes. What about photographers? Writers have writer's block, but what about photographers? Yes, that happens. Sometimes we lose the ability to, to get out of our own heads to capture images. Um, what have I done in the past? I have, I've put the camera down, but I've gotten inspired by other photographers' work, by uh, photo books. I have a lot of photo books on a shelf. Ziv has a million photo books on his shelf as well. Take a break from photography? I, I don't know that. I, I don't want to take a break. I don't. I, if, if you're just trading time for dollars, meaning you're just doing crappy photo shoots just to make money, then you may want to refocus on something that you enjoy. So when I, when I lose interest, or not lose interest, but have trouble getting inspired, I look at these photo books from the past, history, other things that people have captured, and I get instant inspiration from seeing it. It, it always helps to look at other people's work that is the best of the best, and that inspires me to keep going and becoming a better photographer, or getting out of that, that block. Other than that, I can't tell you what to do. Uh, two more. Go ahead. Where's it going? Uh, smartphones versus DSLRs. You're not going to surpass the quality in low light situations anytime soon. You're not going to get better lenses yet. For, point, uh, for these cameras. Samsung came out with a new camera that has a zoom lens. The quality is getting better. But in essence, the point and shoot market for cameras are dead because the iPhone, the Android, we're at Google, right? Androids, because, <laughs> because that's, that's the, people have cameras in their pockets now. The, it, it's still the person behind it. I'm going to get a better picture with my iPhone or Android, whatever, than a layman, a person that doesn't have any skills. Because in, a, in your hands, as people that understand photography, you're going to get better pictures because you understand lighting and composition. That's where the whatever camera you have in your hand is going to be the best. But I don't think you're going to see DSLRs or anything else being surpassed by, point, by cameras. Like, you're not going to go shoot a wedding with an iPhone. It's just not going to happen. And mirrorless cameras? Uh, I think mirrorless cameras are just going to get folded into smaller, larger sensor cameras. Like Sony has the A7R and all that. It's a smaller camera that's smaller than a lot of mirrorless is with a full frame sensor. So I think that's what you're going to see. Sensors get cheaper, better in low light situations. One more question. Yes. Oh, well, OK. All right. You mean make Aliyah? I don't know. It's been, it's, it's much, I like it better than New York. No offense, Adam. It's not as pushy as New York, which is hard to believe. Same amount of Jews, though. Yeah, that's true. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen. I just bought a place in Philly, and unless I sell more video guides, then maybe I could have a place here uh, and all of that. Buy video guides. So I guess they, they're giving me the wrap-up sign. Yeah, Rebecca? Where's Mike? Where's Mike? Mike is right back there. Uh, so, guys. What we're going to do now, I'm going to wrap it up, and we're going to do a big group photo. So you, uh, Wong, do you know how you want to do this? Yeah, 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 we got it. Don't All right, don't move yet. I, I'm not done yet. All right. Lech. Don't run away. So I, I'm going to let Wong take over in a minute, and, but I, wanna, I really appreciate you guys opening up and being so uh, accepting and, and welcoming to us, all of us who came on this trip, uh, and thank you guys for coming out to listen. We're going to do this group photo. Then I'll have time to talk to you guys and take selfies, but I do have to be out of here at, I'm not leaving it. I have to leave at 11.30, I believe. So we'll try to talk to as many of you guys as possible and get as many pictures, and that's it. You ready? Can you guys do my outro with me? I'll do the Jared Poland part, and you can do the fronosphoto.com and see ya? Yeah. All right. We good with the clock? Yeah. All right, you ready? Jared Poland. Fronosphoto.com. See ya. Lech. <laughs>